Welcome to Mexico Unexplained, where we will explore the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. This series presents information based partly on theory and conjecture. The podcaster's purpose is to suggest some possible explanation, but not necessarily the only ones to the subjects we will examine. Here is your host, Robert Bitto. Welcome, and muy bienvenidos to episode number 289 of Mexico Unexplained where we examine the magic, the mysteries, and the miracles of Mexico. I'm your host, Robert Pitto. Don Clemente, buenos dias. Although I've never met her, I have an image of Maria firmly in my mind. She answers the phone at the sales office for Don Clemente, the original mass producers of Mexico's iconic Loteria game whose presses have been running non-stop since 1887, cranking out millions of these games. Maria's voice is smoky, almost sultry, like a film star from the golden age of Mexican cinema. In my mind, this receptionist is a combination of Maria Felix, Isabella Corona, and Dolores del Rio. And for those not acquainted with these stars, they are definitely worth a look up. She is usually quick to be professionally cheerful, but over the past few months, the lilt has been missing from that raspy voice of hers. While Maria points out that my company is probably the number one seller of these picture bingo games in the United States, and I do sell untold crates of these games, my orders are not enough to stop a downward trend the company has seen in the past few years. As Mexico and the rest of Latin America go increasingly digital, it seems that interest in this once highly popular game is diminishing. The Loteria is seen as an older person's game and a relic from another time. It's losing ground to the likes of Angry Birds and Grand Theft Auto V. I knew something was going on when the company started cutting its product lines, Historically, they have sold all sorts of games, from finely made decks of Spanish playing cards to Serpientes y Escaleras, which is similar to the Chutes and Ladders game, but with more interesting pictures and situations. They've also sold party supplies like confetti and streamers. Competition from China and the easing of trade restrictions in Mexico have cut a lot into Don Clemente's other businesses. I'm concerned about their core, though, which has been a staple in my business since day one and has represented an enduring fixture of Mexican popular culture. In a phone call before Christmas, I promised Maria that we would put our heads together to come up with some plans to revive the sagging sales of the game. She said that the future of the game might be in the United States, with an increasing Hispanic population and with many Americans wanting to learn Spanish. I really couldn't come up with many ideas other than to promote the game more through my business, which I have already been doing. Should the company create a phone app, an interactive multiplayer internet game? I'm aware that culture trends ebb and flow, and what is hot one year is not hot the next. But when something that seems so entrenched in a culture is fading away, I can't help but feel kind of sad. I will continue to sell these games as long as my customers want them, but I have a feeling that one day soon I will call the Loteria sales office and the rich voice of Maria will be replaced by a mechanical this number is no longer in service message. I posted what I just read to the blog connected to my business, Sueños Latin American Imports, on Wednesday, February 19, 2014. A lot has changed since then. Maria has since retired, and global lockdowns have been a boon to Don Clemente, breathing new life into the brand and into the familiar Mexican bingo game. For those unfamiliar with Loteria, it is a Mexican game of chance, much like bingo, but using images called out from a deck of cards rather than numbers and letters called out from ping pong balls taken out of a bucket. The deck of calling cards has 54 different images, and those images are randomly arranged on tablas, or boards placed in front of the player. Each tabla has 16 images on it, arranged on a grid going 4x4. 
The images also have numbers associated with them, but they are rarely referenced during play. When an image is called out, the player places a pinto bean, a plastic chip, or pebble, or whatever on their tabla in front of them until a certain pattern is completed, at which time the player calls out Loteria. A player can win if they get four across, four up and down, one in each corner, and four in a box shape called a pozo. Blackout games are common in the U.S., but not in Mexico. Loteria games are usually sold in packets containing 10 or 20 different boards, including the deck of 54 calling cards. Some games come with plastic markers, but most do not. To purchase a game with some of the proceeds going to Mexico unexplained, please see the link in the description. Like the sugar confection craft called Alfeñique, used in sugar skulls as discussed in Mexico Unexplained episode number 120, the Loteria game has Italian origins. A picture bingo game like what is now played in Mexico began in Italy in the 1400s. It arrived in Mexico in the 1760s and was a parlor game played by the upper classes. Over the next 100 years, La Loteria slowly evolved into what it is today, with its familiar images known to all Mexicans. Here is a rundown of each image, with its corresponding number and the translation into English. Feel free to skip ahead if you are familiar with these, or if you are bored, or try to keep up and say these along with me to see how well you know the deck. Number 1. El Gallo the rooster. Number two, El Diablito, the little devil. Number three, La Dama, the lady. Number four, El Catrin, the fancily dressed man. Number five, El Paraguas, the umbrella. Number six, La Sirena, the mermaid. Number seven, La Escalera, the ladder. Number eight, La Botella, the bottle. Number 9. El Barril, the barrel. Number 10. El Arbol, the tree. Number 11. El Melon, the melon. Number 12. El Valiente, the brave man. Number 13. El Gorrito, the bonnet. Number 14. La Muerte, death. Number 15. La Pera, the pear. Number 16. La bandera, the flag. Number 17, el bandolón, the mandolin. Number 18, el violoncelo, the cello. Number 19, la garza, the heron. Number 20, el pájaro, the bird. Number 21, la mano, the hand. Number 22, la bota, the boot. Number 23, la luna, the moon. Number 24, El Cotorro, the parrot. Number 25, El Borracho, the drunk. Number 26, El Negrito, the little black man. Number 27, El Corazón, the heart. Number 28, La Sandia, the watermelon. Number 29, El Tambor, the drum. Number 30, El Camarón, the shrimp. Number 31, Las Jaras, the arrows. Number 32, El Musico, the musician. Number 33, La Araña, the spider. Number 34, El Soldado, the soldier. Number 35, La Estrella, the star. Number 36, El Caso, the saucepan. Number 37, El Mundo, the world. Number 38, El Apache, the Apache. Number 39, El Nopal, the prickly pear. Number 40, El Alacran, the scorpion. Number 41, La Rosa, the rose. Number 42, La Calavera, the skull. Number 43, La Campana, the bell. Number 44, El Cantarito, the little water pitcher. Number 45, El Venado, the deer. Number 46, El Sol, the sun. Number 47, La Corona, the crown. 
Number 48, La Chalupa, the canoe. Number 49, El Pino, the pine tree. Number 50, El Pescado, the fish. Number 51, La Palma, the palm tree. Number 52, La Maceta, the flower pot. Number 53, El Arpa, the harp. And finally, number 54, La Rana, the frog. Each image is assigned a rhyme or verse, and sometimes these are used instead of calling out the name of the image. An example would be card number 28, La Sandia, or the watermelon. The rhyme in Spanish goes like this, La barriga que Juan tenía era empacho de sandia. The swollen belly that Juan had was from eating too much watermelon. Others may not rhyme, as in the case of image number 47, la corona, or the crown. The phrase in Spanish calls la corona el sombrero de los reyes, or the hat of kings. Some phrases or rhymes differ according to who is publishing the game. For example, one company uses this phrase in connection with la campana, or the bell. Una viejita con un solo diente llama a toda la gente. In English, this loosely translates to a little old woman with only one tooth calls out to everybody. In the Don Clemente official version, they say this in connection with the bell. Tú con la campana y yo con tu hermana. You with the bell and I with your sister. Many people mistake the Loteria cards for fortune-telling cards or a tarot deck, but they are never used in divination or in the occult arts. Some of the images have caused offense to modern people, especially in the United States. While Don Clemente has kept to the original for the most part, in other published games, El Negrito, the little black man, is seen as a racist stereotype and has been replaced. Also, La Botella, or the bottle, has gone from a beer bottle or a bottle of tequila to a bottle of ketchup or hot sauce. In more modest versions of the Loteria game, the bare-chested La Serena, or the mermaid, has her breasts covered up by seashells. In still other versions, El Valiente, the valiant man, is shown without his knife to cater to non-violent sensibilities. In addition to modern-day politically correct edits to the traditional Loteria images, there exist dozens, if not hundreds, of other varieties of the game with different themes. In the 1930s, the Catholic Church in Mexico came up with its own very religious version of the game. An explosion of different varieties occurred starting in the early 21st century, mostly coming from the United States including a few made with a pandemic theme. Images from all games are recycled, upcycled, and otherwise incorporated into various craft projects and merch, from coasters to earrings to decoupage vases to t-shirts and wedding invitations. The creativity expressed in connection to these images is limited only to the imagination. With a renewed interest in the game in the past few years, in the face of bored people living in lockdowns, Mexico's Loteria game experienced a renaissance of sorts. Also, within the past decade, Loteria apps have been developed, along with online multiplayer games. It seems like the concerns that Maria and I expressed over the phone back in 2014 were misplaced. The iconic Mexican Loteria game is not in danger of going away anytime soon. Thank you once again for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained. Remember to like and subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. Tell your friends by sharing these shows with others. Please go to our website, MexicoUnexplained.com, for references, illustrations, and for free access to transcripts of past shows. Please visit Amazon.com to purchase the books, Mexico Unexplained and Mexican Monsters, to get hard copies of The Magic, The Mysteries, and The Miracles of Mexico. We appreciate your kind attention once again. Until next time, thank you and gracias.
Thank you for listening to another episode of Mexico Unexplained with host Robert Bitto. For show summary, relevant links and commentary, please check out our website at mexicounexplained.com. Like us on Facebook and be a part of the conversation. Adios and hasta la vista.